Hi, I'm Martin from Printer Potty. What we're going to be showing you in this video is how to fit a external Printer Potty waste ink tank to this Epsom XP645. Now these instructions are going to cover a myriad of other models, including the XP500 and then the XP600 all the way up to the X860. Sorry, the XP860. And the reason I've chosen this particular model it's white plastic, um, makes it a lot easier for you to actually see what's going on. But even though you will have other printers that will be uh, made out of black plastic, um, the general design and the general sort of layout of the printer will be pretty much exactly the same. First things first, in terms of tools, um, we have our Printer Potty XP2 kit here that has the tubing extension and the tank all as uh, one kit. We have our Phillips crosshead screwdriver. You've got a couple of options here. Um, some people prefer to just drill a hole and use that as a way of nice sort of clean way of doing things. I personally tend to go the route of cutting using a pair of um, snips like this, then taking the bit of plastic out with a pair of normal pliers and then cleaning everything up with a file like this. Um, the other thing you'll need is either like a, a hook or a very thin flathead screwdriver, you'll need that to hook the waste tube down so that you can actually cut it. Oh, and that's the point, you will need something like this to actually cut the waste tube itself because you're gonna be cutting it so that you can splice in or connect your external waste tube to run the waste ink out of the printer. Okay, so that's tools, on with the process. What we need to do is take this printer apart enough to be able to gain access to the waste tube so that we can then redirect it out using an extension. So first thing to do is open up the lid. Now this particular printer, <laughs> lid doesn't want to stay up. So we need something to hold it open. I'm just going to use my Prince Potty kit here. Slide that in like so, and that jams it open. Then there are two screws. One is located just here, and the other is located just here. So we'll take those out. Once that's out, we then want to remove this here. And my thumbnails aren't as good at the minute, but yeah, basically get yourself in under here and then push forward and that panel will come off. Put that to one side out of the way. Then we have a screw here, and there is another screw down inside just here, just in there. So let's take this one off first. And this one down here. Now, <clears throat> what I didn't mention is a magnetic tip screwdriver like this one here makes life a lot easier, particularly for getting this screw down here because it will actually allow you to just lift it out rather than needing well, to mess around with forceps or something similar. There you go. See, magnetic tip just makes that job so much easier. Then what you need is something to just get in underneath this side of the flap, lift like so, and then that panel, that panel will come forward and off like so. The last panel to remove is this one here. So what we do, flip down the front paper tray and lift this up a little bit. Now that we've lifted this up out of the way, now just be careful about this because it is loose. Um, you can, if you want, bring this back down and it will just hold things in place a little bit better. Not absolutely vital, but there you go. What we're gonna do is now remove this screw here and this screw here. That's one. And Then this panel just pulls away like so, and you again just pop it to one side. Now, if you've watched the pad um, replacement video for this particular model, you'd know that we would normally remove this screw and take out the um, other screw underneath to remove the pad holder. We don't need to do any of that because we're redirecting the wasting out of the printer um, 
and ignoring the pads altogether. The pads will become redundant. So you don't need to touch the pads. You don't need to take them out. You can just leave them. Turns out using the Prince Potty tank isn't the best way of holding up the lid. So I'm just gonna put that there. That'll hold everything pretty much up enough that it's out of the way. Right, so what we're doing now is we are looking for our waste tube. The tube will run from the back down here all the way from a little pump, little peristaltic pump, a bit like a blood pump, all the way along the side here where it goes around and up and then down around about here somewhere behind this piece of plastic where um, it then has a little uh, connection point above the waste pad holder. Before I lift this up, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna usually just shut this panel here because otherwise what, hap what tends to happen is this gets pushed off like that, which makes things a little bit awkward. So what you do, just close that up like that. It tends not to. As you can see, it's not hard to put it back on, okay? Um, and if it does come completely out, all you're doing is pushing this bit and in this side, and then that bit goes over the top like so. Anyway. So now that we've got that tidied away, lift up our holder like that. I'm just gonna put a screwdriver in like that to hold everything up. One of the benefits of having a white printer like this is I can see really easily where the waste tube is. So you can understand why I did it this way. But that's it there. That black tube that runs down and then runs along there is the tube we're after. To hold this thing open so it doesn't keep crashing down on my fingers, I'm just going to stick that in there and that will give me better access to the waste tube here. Okay, so what I do, get hold of that and then just hook that down slightly so I can gain access. Now the key thing is do not pull this way. Okay, if you stretch along here, you're likely to damage the tube or possibly pull it off of this end. Okay, what you want to do you want to pull down like that. Because you're pulling the excess tubing from above, there isn't any elastic force pulling the tube back in here. If you pull the tube this way and then cut it, chances are the tube would then pull itself back and your cut end would be somewhere in there and you'd have problems actually getting hold of it again. That's why we pull from the top here, hold it, and then we cut like so okay and I have a bit of excess there like that now your kit contains this extension tube which has a elbow fitting an L fitting like this and a barb on it what you now need to do is get hold of the bit of tube at the bottom here and plug your barb into that. Now, if it's very easily coming out, what you need to do is get hold of a pair of forceps or something like that, just to stabilize it. What you need to do, get hold of a little bit of kitchen towel or a Q-tip or something like that, just create a little thing like that and then swab out the inside of your tube like so to remove any of that lubricating ink. Do that a couple of times as need be. I'm just grabbing a bit of kitchen towel like this, pinching off a little bit, twisting it, twisting it like that, so that I create a little bit of a swab and pop it in. I'll try to pop it in. <laughs> Twist it into your tube and use that to swab around inside like so, just to remove that, that waste ink that's gonna lubricate the inside of the tube and stop your barb from um, getting a good firm grip. So with some pretty appalling lighting, what I'm gonna do, just be careful what you're doing. And now what we do is we put connection barb connection into the tube like that and release our clip but as you can see here we've been able to adjust the tube to back and then that slots down in there like that 
quite nicely. Holds it in, stops the tube popping off. Rather good, actually. What we need to do now is determine where we're going to be cutting our notch in the part. So what you do is lift that up, slide that is in to the point, into the point where it's going to go. That's going to go down there. We need to be cutting a notch around about there. Now the other thing you'll have in your kit is this tiny little plug here. Now this isn't essential. There isn't any more waste ink that's going to be making up and over into the waste pads here and it can't backflow because gravity will stop it from doing it. But if you want to and you've got the plug, just pull that down and slot your plug into the open end of the tube that's running up and over. I'm sure you've already noticed this, but I just wanted to make absolutely clear. This extension should be plugging into the tube that runs along the side here. The plug goes into the one that goes up and over. You do not get them the other way around. If you put the plug into this one, it's gonna be a horrific mess. So you need to make sure that you have got the extension going into the tube that runs along here. We can now remove the panel again and make the adjustment. Now, as I said before, you got two choices. You could drill it here. And to be honest, I think that's what I'm gonna do for this bit. Create a nice gentle um, curve at the bottom and then finish off. I've got a, a circular file here. I'm just gonna... When we're happy that our notch is around about the right size to allow that waste tube to come out, what we need to do now, put it into position and then just gently manipulate our tube part down. I got it in the wrong position. <laughs> yeah, don't know if you can tell this from here, but my hole is slightly in the wrong position, okay? It needs to be a tiny bit further over there. Okay, so what we do, lift that up, pull that out again. This time I'm going to use my clippers just to expand the hole along a little bit here. To open that up. Now, as you can see, I've left, there's a bit of a jagged tooth there, which I need to get rid of. So again, I'm gonna use my file. You do not want to leave anything sharp here just in case it causes problems and cuts your tube, that would be bad. Right, so now we got a notch. Let's try that again. And now it sits perfectly. So that's the notch cut. The tubing part is now pressed down into its channel and locked in there. That will keep everything nice and tight and tidy. It's actually quite nice to be fair. Um, and now what we do is that'll just tuck up out of the way. Don't have to worry about that. We can now release that down like that. That's the hard part out of the way. It's now time for us to reinsert the screws that we took out of the bottom panel here. If you have um, a black plastic model printer, then you will find that the screws are there's black screws and there's silver screws. Rule of thumb is silver screws go anywhere that normally you wouldn't be able to see them. So in this case, your silver screw would go on here, like this. And your black screw for a black plastic printer would go in here. But because we're dealing with a white plastic model, they're all silver. With that one in, just double check to make sure that's all nice and solid. That's fine. We now replace this panel here. First and foremost, make sure that this is set up properly. If it's over like this, you need to make sure this goes back in over here. Lift that over and then just close that like that. Okay, so it's all lined up. Now you put that slot down and in, and then you push this so it locks over that little nubbin plastic lug there. 
then it's a case of putting your screws back. There's one there and there's that recessed one in there. We'll put the one here first. Like that. And we'll put the one down there in next. Now, this is where a magnetic screwdriver comes in very handy because you can actually get your screw in without necessarily losing it. And I've just done exactly that because this lid isn't high enough. So let me just lift this up, put my printer potty back in there because it made, gave me a better clearance. Right. And again, because I've just lost the screw in there, I'm just gonna use my magnetic tip to pull it out like so, and then try again. That's now in position. Screw it in. So the last bit now is to reinsert this. What you do is you back it in to where the screw holes are and then press down and it clips into position. Just double check that's all working. That's fine. Then we put our two screws back in as we remove them. So one here and one there. And the last one in there, like so. Remove whatever was wedging the lid open and then close it like so. Make sure our lid is on our tank with the vent hole towards the valve. And then screw the connecting piece onto the valve and that will open the valve up automatically. Okay, last thing to do, make sure your tube clamp is open. That's closed, you don't want it like that. No wasting will get through. Just do it like that. That's open, that's good. And that's it. And that's pretty much it. That is your external waste tank installed on, in this case, an XP645. As you can see, the process is relatively painless. The only potentially difficult part is getting to that tube and then cutting it in such a way that it doesn't ping back in. So long as you've actually listened to what we've said about pulling the tube from the top, you should be absolutely fine. One tool that can make things a little bit easier, a pair of forceps like this, locking forceps, they can hold the tube in position so you don't have to worry about it. Those are available on our store, but to be honest with you, we hardly ever use them. So there you go. That's the process for installing a printer potty waste kit to an XP645. This video does cover a series of other printers. You get the full list in the description below. Please do give us a like, thumbs up, share wide if you would like other people to know about this and uh, check the description for where to purchase the kit and also our contact details if you've got a particular question that you'd like to ask privately. Other than that, thanks for watching and we hope to see you in the next one.